Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm your humble host, Banjo Ben, here on your favorite online learning site when it comes to learning how to play banjo, the mandolin, and the guitar. I put up a video like this each and every week along with tabs. I invite you to go check out the site. I have hundreds of videos, hundreds of tabs over there. Today, we're learning a great tasty version. It's not too hard, but it's good enough to play on any stage or in any jam. A great version out of the open G tuning of Man of Constant Sorrow. Okay, so if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a little while, I'll ask you to go visit my favorite website as well, banjobenclark.com. When you're over there, you can join as a Gold Pick member and have access to hundreds of videos, as I mentioned, all the tabs, including the one to this. I have a PDF tab just exactly as I played it in solo. I also have the TEF file over there, which is really cool because you can get the free TEF player and your computer will play the tab for you and you can control the tempo and everything else. It's, it's one of the best learning tools out there. Now on the video, I'm going to do about a 20 minute video lesson showing you how to play each and every note and give you technique and tips um, for how to accomplish this style. I have another video where I play it from start to finish very slowly that you can keep up with, as well as four different speeds of guitar rhythm tracks uh, that you can practice along with before you go to your next local jam, show this baby off, all right? I also have MP3s for you to download um, of just open rhythm tracks that you can play along with, all right? So you need to be a Gold Pick member over on BanjoBenClark.com. I'd be honored to have you. Let's dive into Man of Constant Sorrow. We're going to learn this song in the key of G, but it's a very bluesy song. So what you're going to notice is that as we change through the chords, we're not going to make full chord positions. For example, when we go to C, we're not going to make um, a full C position, or when we go to D, we wouldn't make a full D position. And that's because we're going to use the notes of the G chord, just the open banjo strings, to help kind of drone around the melody that we're presenting. Now this version that I'm teaching, um, I wanted to follow the melody pretty close while at the same time throwing a few tricks in here and there. So we're going to see a lot of slides, we're going to see some hammer-ons, we're going to see some real quick pull-offs, and we're also going to see a lot of bends. The bends kind of give the, the version that I'm teaching some character. So let's throw the tab up there. You'll notice that beneath each one of the notes I have our right hand fingerings labeled, so if it's a T, that means our thumb's playing the string. If it's a one, that would be index. Two would be middle. And we're going to start on the second beat of the first measure. And what I want you to do is go ahead and get in position uh, with your index finger on the first fret of the B string. Okay? And then what we're going to do is play an open G string. And then we're going to bend the third fret of the G string. And we want to bend it up because if we bend down, we're going to probably bend it down into that B string that we're going to be playing, and we want this bend to kind of ring out. It's going to sound like this. You hear how the bend lasts throughout the third note? If we bend it down, we might mute it. Okay, so we're going to bend up, and I encourage you to use two fingers to bend that with, especially if you're using medium gauge strings. So we're going to place our ring finger down the third fret, our middle finger behind it, and we're going to push with both of those to get a good bend. So there's just those three quarter notes sound like this once again. And then we already have our index finger down and that's, um, we're gonna use that to do a hammer on at the very beginning of measure two, this eighth note hammer on. So don't make it too fast. It happens in the, over the course of one beat. So they're just regular eighth notes. It sounds like this. We're just hammering from first to third fret. Then we're gonna start two forward rolls, actually three forward rolls in a row, leaving that ring finger down. So let me just play measures one and two together for you. And I want you, if you can, to accent your middle finger that open D string. That's where our melody is. Now in the third measure, whenever we do that forward roll, we're going to do a really fast 16th note hammer-on this time. So this time the hammer-on does happen fast, um, and it sounds like this, the first four notes of measure three. Hear how that goes? Then halfway through that measure three, we're gonna start a backwards roll back down to that bend. And you can bend that one up, or you can bend it down. I think I end up bending it down because we're going to go ahead and release our index finger. So measure three slowly. Sounds like this. Good. 
When we land on measure four, we're going to do just a quarter note pinch of the G string and D string, one and three. Then we're gonna have another eighth note slide with our ring finger from third fret to fifth fret on that fourth string. Then we're gonna start a series of four rolls here. So measure four slowly, sounds like this. Oops, hit the B string. Let's play it slowly, measures one through four. One, two, three, Here on the website, I have a whole other video where I play the whole thing slowly from start to finish, just like that. When we get into measure five, we're going to uh, once again do an eighth note ornament. This time it's a pull off. We're going to start with our open fifth string and then play the third fret on the third string. And we're going to do a slow pull off to the second fret and then back to the fifth string. So it sounds like this. And what some of you are going to be tempted to do is make that a fast pull off so it sounds like this. We don't want that. We want this pull off to happen in the timing of eighth notes. Then do that backwards roll with the bend that we've already learned. Okay, so measure five slowly sounds like this.